Good evening, everyone. Today is February 8th, 2022. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for getting another opportunity of prayer. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning, allowing us, each and every one of us that's here to see another day, oh God. We ask you, God, that you will bless this broadcast, oh God. I ask you, God, that you will bless the viewers, oh God. As usual, God, I ask you, God, that bless that everybody that's going through in their bodies, oh God. I ask you, God, that you will be with those that are behind the wall, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I ask you, God, to comfort, keep them. Oh God, bless my guests as well as tonight, oh God. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank, as you guys tune in, as you guys check in, please let me know that you're tuning in. Um, give me a give me a comment or a like in the comment section. Um, and if you don't mind, please go ahead and share this story to your page. As well, so that your friends that are not my friends can see this as well. Because we got a good story tonight that we're going to be talking about. I got a, a guest that I'm very excited about and happy to have tonight. Um, tell a, to me a heart touching story that I kind of wanted to get into. So I thank you for taking out the time to do this. But again, please go ahead and to share it to your page. Let me know who's tuning in. And if you have any comments or questions throughout the show, feel free to leave them in the comments. And myself and my guests will try to get to them. In, time, in a timely manner. Um, I want to go ahead and start the show as normal with our Born Day shout outs. I want to say happy Born Day again to Cora Coleman, aka Judy's and James, first baby girl. Happy birthday, Cora. Love you, girl. Um, Miss Tiffany Brown, Nalani Childress, um, Shakira Smith. Happy Born Day, Shakira. Uh, Quadera Marie. Um, happy Born Day again to the beautiful Toya Merritt. Um, happy born day to Justin Roberts. Uh, my girl Cookies, her baby son turned eight, I believe today, either eight or ten. Isaiah, happy born day, Isaiah. Lakeisha Reed, West Side Nation. Um, also from West Side, Rough Rider Nation. Um, Tamara S. Perry, happy born day, beautiful. A former guest as well. Uh, we want to say happy heavenly birthday to the rock star man himself, Mr. Bob Marley, who celebrated on this past week. I want to say happy born day to Nina Hodges, girl. I love you. I love you. I hope you really enjoyed your day today. I want to say happy born day to um my little bro, A Aaron A. Keys. Happy born day, bro. You already know I love you, man. We're gonna we need to get together real quick so we can do work on some stuff, bro. Um, happy heavenly born day to my cousin Earl Rangus, who would have been celebrating his born day on the day as well. Rest in peace, my brother, and happy born day again. And last but not least, I want to say happy born day to, to Miss Beverly Latica, who we'll get into a little bit later. Um, happy born day, Miss. Um, but we're going to get into your story a little bit later with your daughter here. Um, I want to say happy anniversary to Adir and, and Del, Dave Marsh. I want to say happy born, happy anniversary to Cece and Steve Cobb. And last but not least, my man Tyrone Barnes, who celebrated 33 years in the airline industry. Um, thanks for all the memories, Ty, and, and I hope you keep on doing what you're doing, man. Um, and last but certainly not least, we want to continue to keep in prayer with our condolences and our heartfelt sympathies. Um, my girl Taj and her family, who was, she lost a sister on last week, a mother of five. Um, I can't imagine what, what those children are feeling like. Uh, but know that you are in our hearts and our prayers. We pray that God will just keep you guys and, and cover you through the storm and help you get through this very, very difficult time that you guys are going through. And again, please, everyone, keep in, keep um, Jackie, Jacqueline Watson in prayer as well as she lost the oldest son, San Antonio, on last week. Um, and I'm real proud. I want to I want to sidestep for a little bit. I want to say I'm real proud of. Uh, you know, the BPF growth groups, everybody that represented Florida here in South Carolina, uh, Pastor Will Nichols, who drove down and just to support, you know, one of his members in this difficult time. Um, but Jackie, you know, we love you. You're a viewer of the show. Uh, we miss you. Know that you're in our hearts and in our prayers. And we pray that God will just bring you through this with, with, with peace, um, comfort, and everything that you're going through with the loss of your son. Uh, um, we love you. And if you need me, just let me know. I'm here for you as well as uh, group Fire Groove, uh, VPF, and everyone else that's out here. Um, so, you know, you guys just reach out 
and continue to keep everyone lifted up in prayer as you know people are going through difficult times and, and facing different situations at the, you know in this particular day and age um with that being said you know we're going to i'm going to introduce a nice guest um young lady that i know from little rock arkansas um we met through a mutual friend my little bro shout out to mike um and got got to talk and develop a little relationship friendship and you know, we kind of get got to talking and I, she told me a little bit about her story and a little bit about her background. And I was like, you know, I didn't want to use this show to exploit that, but it, it touched my heart so much that I said, I definitely, you know, she's willing to talk about it. Um, I kind of wanted to have her on the show just so, you know, whoever seeing this platform could reach out and do their thing as far as being a help, a hand, um, if you're moved to, what can you do? We're going to get a little to, to that a little bit right now. Um, Nicole, I'm actually checking, trying to check to see this here now. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and introduce you. So tonight we have Nicole Williams with us tonight. Um, beautiful young lady, gifted uh, a, a beautician. Um, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, she, she designs shirts like she does. She hustles. She's a hustler. That's what she is. She's a hustler. <laughs> I've got to get it. She's going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Not by any means necessary, but she's going to do what she got to do to take care of hers and her. And, um, you know, she got a real touching story where her mom has been incarcerated for, I believe, 39 years now, which is like crazy to me. Um, so we're going to get into that a little bit. But if you don't mind, Nicole, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people and let them know a little bit about yourself. Well, I. I'm Nicole Williams, and, and my mom is Beverly Latiker, and she's been locked up for 39 years here at the Arkansas Department of Correction. She has been to three of their different prisons for a crime that, well, they, they sentenced her for something that she she didn't do that. She, she couldn't have possibly done it. The evidence don't say she did it, and then but and it's been the hardest trying to get her out because every attorney, like no attorneys in Arkansas will fool with it. Then like, so out of state attorneys have to have a license to practice here. And then they're like, oh, it's so old. The case is so old, we don't, you know? So yeah, it's pretty much been a hard road, hard road, hard road. Wow. Um. Nicole, can you see can you see the fly feed on your page? Uh, I'm trying to. Hold on, let's see. Try to share it to your page. You should be able to see it there. I did it. Wait okay. a minute, my screen went away. Yeah, okay. and are there any? You see any comments? I'm not seeing any comments on my end on the live feed. Um, no, I'm not. Oh, my phone was. I'm not used to the Android over here. I'm trying to get out. I'm showing that people are tuning in, but I'm not seeing any comments. So I'm gonna see. Okay, I'm back. Wait a Somebody minute. that's out there that's watching, just just say hello, or whatever, just to let me know that I'm able to see the comments. Okay. All right, what's good, La? Yeah, La East just commented, hey, Mar. Um. Okay, so we good. We should be good to go. Just want to make sure I can see the comments. Um, like I said, you guys feel free to, um, if you have any comments or questions for myself or the nice guest, uh, leave it in the comments section, um, but we'll try to get to it. Can, can you actually see the comments on your end, Nicole? Uh, yeah. Can you see my comment I just made? Um, not yet. Yeah, I see. Hey, okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. So, um. Again, I mentioned happy belated born day to your mom, which is Beverly Latica. Um, tell us a little bit about the case. Tell, tell us, you know, you don't have to go into details, but whatever you can tell us, let's let's get into um, how did your mom get in a position where she's been incarcerated? Now, I believe she's been incarcerated now for 39 years, but she received a life sentence. Yeah, yeah, oh. it should have been a life sentence, but that's what they gave her um she met this man in chicago and she came down here and he set a crime up and 
they a man ended up getting killed. But he was there at the scene when, you know, <laughs> this crime happened. And my mama had never shot a gun before. Everybody know when you shoot, it go up in the air. So uh, they sentenced her to life off of what, they didn't have a gun for evidence. They had no like gunpowder as dude. So they sentenced her off of what my daddy said. Cause the man is supposed to be my daddy that turned her in. Cause he was like, he was supposed to get 500. And I asked him before he died, did he get the money? He was like, nah, I ain't get the money. So, uh, but he got- now, Hold on, let me stop you right there. Just so, you know, we're following along and everybody's up to speed. This is the same, now the dude that you're referring to as your dad, this is the guy that actually set the whole thing up. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes he put her in prison. And so, where is that? Oh yeah, he didn't get the reward money. And he told them like, go pick her up or whatever. And he told her, you know, since you're a woman, you won't get that. Time. But I guess him being a man, you know, he don't get that much time. And she never got like a pretrial or anything to say guilty or not guilty. They just picked her up and took her straight to trial and said, we're giving you life because she wasn't from here. She's from Chicago. So Arkansas basically said they got him one. You know what I'm saying? Because of that. So I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know. Okay, so... What was the actual uh, what was the actual second circumstances around her being set up? Like you said, it was a, obviously it was a murder that was involved. But what what's, what what was so the setup? Was? The setup was he told her to go to Jack. They went to go get some beer. Her and this man, like my dad, introduced my mom to this dude because he was a pimp. You know that's what he do. He be pimping out here. Well, he used Who was the pimp? The, the your dad. Yeah, my dad. He was okay. a pimp. I have a okay. lot of brothers. But um, he was a pimp, and he told her, you know, you're going to go with this dude. He got a lot of money. And, you know, you're going to rock kill him, I guess. I don't know where the killing part, I wasn't there. Mm. So I don't know where the robbing and killing part came in, but I know for a fact she was supposed to rob the man. So they got to the hotel, and when they went in the hotel, uh, she said that she went to the bathroom, and it just came at the bathroom and like boom but my daddy was there too at the, you know because they had a pimp situation when he sent this woman after he ain't going too far and when she got in on the stand she told them that my daddy was the one that shot the man and then you know she took the blame but they was like nah we gonna go with what you wrote down first and see you know he set it up for them to go to that hotel and I guess the man thought he was going to get sex, and instead, he lost his life. I mean, rest in peace to him, because that was sad, but... Okay. So, just just again, so I want I want to make sure that we all on the same page, we're following the same. So, your dad, which is a pimp, he has your mom there, but he sets her up with a giant, however you want to word it, to yeah. rob this guy and, and possibly kill. You don't know, like you said, we can't speak to that. She wasn't there. We, we don't want to speculate. Um, but you made mention, you said, she said she went to the bathroom and she came back out. Now, is this based off of something that she told you, or is this a part of the statement? Because, like you said, it, I, I believe in doing it's something. A part, it's a part of the statement mm -hmm. that she wrote. That's what the statement that she wrote said. But the statement when she got on the stand was that my daddy did it. Because, like, then she was like, Yes, I need to tell, you know what I'm saying? I need to tell the truth because she's scared now. You know, that's her life. Mm -hmm. So, but he got on the stand and said he didn't even know her. So, wow. This is, he, this is his dad. This is his supposed dad at the time. Saying that he my, doesn't know your mother. My alleged father. My, yes, it is. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the old butter pimping right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's an old man. I mean, like, and my family even know when I met him, he was like, I'm a dirty old man. I was like, I know, I know. You don't have to tell me. He was also, I mean, dude was just like, I mean, I ain't nobody ever had nothing. I've never heard anybody say anything good about him except he was a good bricklayer. Wow. Uh, 
and that was it. <laughs> so, and he never feared and put no money books. Her whole entire family, like we've been down here in Arkansas for 39 years and not one of her family members. Well, my aunt, but I was too young to know. She came down here once or twice, but none of her siblings or anything. And it's 17, well, 16 when she passed, when she came down here because her sister passed. It was 16 of them. And nobody sent her two dollars, five dollars, nothing. They're horrible. But wow. I'm for and I'm a fight for. Her. So uh yeah. Hey, what's good, Erica Janelle? Thanks for tuning in. Yo, yeah, Mike, big Mike checking in too. What's good, little bro? Big little bro. <laughs> um, yeah, man. And thanks again, Mike, for putting this together, man. Um, but okay, so I just wow, like. Okay, so how do you, as a as a byproduct, as as a child? Well, I'll get into some of those questions later, but I just find it amazing that the same guy that would set this up is the guy that would say that he doesn't even know your mind. Like, how do yeah. we go from mastermind and okay, we're gonna set this guy up and, and rob him to it coming down to the point to where you actually turn her in? For reward money that you eventually don't receive um and now you're saying you don't even know this woman yeah and his mama got up there and said she didn't know her his brother got up there and said she didn't know her and these were all the people that you know were supposed to be like on her side oh, like family, yeah that basically worked for the defense you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it was sad that was very sad. And all they sentenced her on was what they said, because he the one called the police and said she did it. You know what I'm saying? So they went over what he said and what she wrote down. And then they gave her life. She didn't get like to go to court and be like guilty or not guilty. They just sentenced her. And like that's not how the justice justice system is supposed to work. Like that's just not it. So, all right, so let me ask you this, because I I definitely can't, like, just skate around that. I'm quite sure that you've had conversations with your mom. Um, of course, I'm quite sure anybody that's watching is the first thing that you're thinking. You probably thought the same thing yourself. If you didn't do it, why would you why would you confess to it? Why would you write down that you did? Like, Because you, my mother, like I told you, my mother was, um, she, my mama didn't have, she grew up in Chicago. And like I said, my grandmother was the mother of 16 kids. That's a lot. And then I asked my mama. Mom was the mother of what? I said, my mama didn't come from like no loving okay. family. You know right. what I'm saying? She was the, she number 16 out of 17 kids. She don't even know our brothers and sisters. My wow. grandmother was born in 1925. So, I mean, you know, she was a sharecropper that went to Chicago, like during that great migration thing where they all ran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mama, my grandmother was on, on welfare. She said she didn't get a real job till she was like 40. My mother had been raped by her own brothers as a child. Like, she suffered a lot. And to turn around... And a man tell you this much older than you, because he was like, he had been like 40 some, and she was 19. And somebody telling, brought his mama, they called with it. Him and his mama went to Chicago and told my grandma that they was gonna bring her back to this big, beautiful life. And that he was gonna marry her and make an honest woman out of her and all of this stuff. And then ended up, you know, bringing her down here on some pimping or you know that ain't that ain't cool yeah you manipulated the woman you know and brought her down here to arkansas and then she lost her life but see he that's i mean he that kind of man he run back and forth he used to run back and forth killing folks and go run to chicago he'll kill somebody and run back down here to arkansas and I don't know, to me, it feel like he worked for the police because how you set up a whole crime and then you don't go to jail for nothing. Like, you just walk away, you know? Yes. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but thanks for tuning in to Kiana. What's up? Um, Kiana asks, can you see the questions? Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I asked, no, um, hey, I'm all uh, y'all. I'm sorry for tuning in yeah. late. Was your was your mom was her mom the only one that went to jail? Yes, she the only one got some time. Nobody else got no time. Nobody. Yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out how my dad would get on the stage on the on not on the stage on the uh on the bench and tell them people that he didn't know this woman and it rose like that and it was just like okay. All right, sure. <laughs> and, and, and see, and, and that right there, it doesn't make sense to me. And I mean, you can't really speak to this, but like as I'm listening to you, it's like, what is what is what is going on with Chicago where grown men are going after these little girls, like or this teenage thing? And I ain't trying to throw R. Kelly under the bus, but I'm just saying, like, we've seen countless amount of stories out of Chicago where you got these grown men preying on little girls, like. What is that really about, man? Like, do you not have mothers? Do you not have sisters? Can you imagine somebody doing the same thing to one of your siblings or your mother when she was at that particular age? Like, how would that make you feel? Like, I don't, I don't understand that psyche, and I'm glad I, that I don't understand it. But I just don't understand, like, you know, um, like how could you have something like that? Um, um, oh man, I thank you. I will definitely be praying for your moms. Exactly, appreciate it, Kiana. Uh, if there, if this isn't too personal, do you have a relationship with your father now? Uh, I did until he went in the ground. Okay. I don't know how the relationship. It was a, a situation, more like, yeah. Now let me <laughs> ask you this, because you, you you mentioned you said um you referred to him as, as allegedly your father initially. Like, have you ever found out if this man was actually your dad or? Well, I'm waiting on my DNA test to come back. It's just taking too long. I mean. I'm about to the point where I'm going to swab one of my brothers and wow. we see a match. You know what I'm saying? Everybody say, oh, you look like him. I don't know. I don't see it because when I met him, like literally, literally, I know a lot of people probably going to be mad at me when I don't care. But literally when I met him, he was hitting the pipe. Like, and you know how somebody that looked like after what drugs can do to you? Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't see and I don't see, I, I see what my mama, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the only person that I've been around. Yeah. Hey, good question too, um, La, and good question, Erica, too. We're going to get to that, Erica. Like, that's part of where I was going now. So, again, your mom received a life sentence, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's been incarcerated 39 years as of today, correct? Yes. And you're only 38. Yes. So... Like essentially, and I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. But like, I, I can't, I can't, I, I, I don't want to like fast forward or skip over things. But like, just let us into the world or the mentality, the psyche, the trauma of Nicole. Like, like, how do you, how do you even develop? How do you begin to develop a relationship with your mom while she's been incarcerated? Because if if that if I'm led to believe, like, with the, the numbers add up, that means technically you were born while she was already convicted and serving, correct? Yeah, somewhere in there she got to have sex and conceive me somewhere, somewhere. But, it's, I mean, I was born, like, really messed up. I was born with three holes in my heart and a hole on the top of my mouth. I was underdeveloped. They told me I looked like a baby from a third world country. But um, I was taken very good care of, sort of, uh, taken very good care of. I don't know how to put that because it was weird because some people that work for the prison took care of me. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, you know, it wasn't the best, but they took me down to the prison. And at first, they used to tell me like, oh, that's uh, your godmother. And I, cause I was like the only person, it's like six kids. And I'm the only person that got to keep going down to the prison twice a month. Don't nobody want to, you know. <laughs> so if, this, if your mom is actually, and before we get before it goes, I'm, like I said, I'll help me follow these questions so that I don't I miss them. But um, Erica said, were you born already? Asked because couldn't, couldn't him being your father prove he knew her in some way? 
No, I, I, I was not born yet. I didn't come out to September of the next year. And then by my, you know, counts of having three kids on take nine months to have a baby. And my mama got locked up December the 22nd, uh, 2000, I mean, 2000, 1982. And I was born September the 9th, 1983. And I was not fully developed. So, I mean... Uh -huh. I'm just trying to see how overturn baby gonna be like. I was past the term. If she get so called got pregnant, I mean, she had to get pregnant the day she went to jail or something. But she was at work, yeah. so. But yeah, I I was conceived somewhere. That's all I know. Wow. Somebody. And again, it's like okay, so another another thing that it makes me ask too, like, um, or or wonder. How in the world is it that he can say he don't know her, but he was the same person that turned in? How could you how could you turn somebody in or have information about somebody that you don't know? We I, I had I was gonna go ask the Little Rock PD how do they do their investigations? Like <laughs> cause I mean, at that perjury or something. I mean, somewhere in here, yeah. somebody. But this is how I look at it. The state of Arkansas is so hungry to lock someone up and throw away the key. She was from Chicago and she didn't know nothing. And they knew it and she was black and they took her life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, when I came out, I don't know how they scurried me around, but I know one thing, I went to a clemency hearing once and a, a white woman, it was a judge. And she said to me, Oh, um, you're still around? Are you that baby she was pregnant with? And I had to been like, I think 30 at the time. I was, I was a little wow. still hot headed. And I was like, what you mean by that? Wait you a minute. I mean? You said the judge asked you, are you still around? Yes. I'm always going to be around. I'm not going any. This is my mother. And <laughs> like, I didn't know how that lady meant that, though. She was like, yeah, oh, my crazy. God. That's that's absolutely absurd and crazy. And people what like people sometimes like some of my close circle they ask me, you know, what was that like? Like Arkansas is like like North. North, if you know, you know. Like Newark is one of the where I grew up in Jersey, it's one of those places where like you don't really talk about it to other people unless they from it because they can't relate. You, you know what I mean? Like you have to be from there to be able to relate to what the different stories, whether you're a teacher whether you're a mechanic, whether you're a drug dealer, whether you're a church person, like if you go over in someplace else, it's not going to be the same level of understanding. After I moved to Little Rock, Arkansas, <laughs> I could not believe, I had never heard of the word, what people call culture shock, okay? But I quickly learned what culture <laughs> shock was, what it means, and, and it, it was like, I tell people all the time, the best way I could, I could describe moving to Little Rock was like time traveling. It was like going back in time to like what I imagine living in the 40s and the 50s was like because you had people black, white that were young calling people yes, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Like, and I'm coming from a place where I'm a rebel. I'm from the inner city. I'm from the ghetto. Only white people I seen were people on TV or either teachers. I didn't go to school with any white kids. So it just like blew my mind. Like even when, when it comes to some, some white people down there, I would be like, you you guys do know that we're free, right? Like you do know that you have rights. You have the right to speak your mind. You like I couldn't believe <laughs> not, this was not, just the way of life. This was just not, the way of life. And, and I'm not hating on the state of Arkansas, but to speak to your point, I, 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 I've I've witnessed it. They have no problem with, especially like you said, an out of towner locking you up. That's another victory. That's another that's another case for us. That's more dollars in somebody's pocket. But we really don't care about you. We really don't care at the end of the day. We have a quota. We have numbers that we have to to uh, uh, satisfy so that the status quo can stay the status quo. And if you just happen to be a victim of it, sorry. But I find that highly offensive that a judge would say to you, are you still here at the age of 30 years old? Like, you're supposed to get shot or you're supposed to be dead or like, like that's just crazy oh. to me. But I said, and it was recorded because that was like the first time they was doing it on video. So that was recorded. That was on the screen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
like they can go back and look at that. That is rude. You do not ask anyone nothing like that. She was an evil little like. But the last time I went to the clemency board, they said some really disrespectful stuff. I mean, they I, and I went off, and the guard came and got me and was like, "They're not God," but they told me they was like, "We'll let her go. We just can't ever see the state of Arkansas letting her go." I was like, "What kind of?" We are in a small prison room. Like, this is not the governor's mansion where they do all the deciding or wherever it goes on it. Like, this is the, we are still, it. this is a gang. That's what I thought some people. I said, y'all make us drive all the way down here, bring all these people with me, and then play games with me in this room. Like, this is a gang. Like, well, we know, we know that when it comes to Arkansas, like, it, it's run by, and, and they could be absolutely right. It doesn't matter what how the people feel or, or what the wardens say. At the end of the day, everything comes through in the governor. And it ain't necessarily that the governor has all the power. It's about the whoever the, the, the secret society is that he works for, that he's the that he's the, the face for. But those are the people that's making the decision. I tell people all the time, like one of the one of the little known facts that I did learn growing there was Arkansas is the second state behind the state of Florida for retirees, which means yes, that there's a whole lot of old people there. There's a whole lot of old yeah. old people there, which means grandparents yeah. and everything else. Why do they not have any amusement parks? Why do they not have anything we that do. family? We have they got, a, they got an amusement park now? Yeah, it's been there, you know, in High Springs, the little bitty thing, Magic Springs. Man, listen, that <laughs> thing got two rides. That is not no amusement park. I've, I've been to, I've been to Walmart parking lot that. <laughs> That had more more entertainment than that. Come on, that you cannot consider that as a amusement park. An section to it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yes. Before I get to the next question, I did want to ask you though. So you were talking about how they would take you to visit her, and they would tell you at the end. So initially, you didn't know that this was your mom. You thought that this was your godmom. Like, yes. what would be the reason then for them to take you to see your godmother in jail? That's what I was trying to figure out. Why she sending me gifts and why this lady kiss like this? And why she it was weird. It was really weird. Cause like I I I got this, I do know I ain't scared of that prison because I watched it change from 83 all the way to well 84, because I ain't started going to see my mom until I was seven months old. So from 84 until 2022, I have seen the uh prison change. What happened to your screen? Oh. I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm by myself. I just got a little fancy. Like sometimes when you talk in the guests, I like to make sure the guests are center screen by themselves. So oh, I'm okay. still here with you, though. You good? You good? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not where was I? At? Oh yeah. So I seen the little prison grow or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I watched it change from gates to metal detect. Like I, I got, I had an idea at ten. This is just to go to the prison. Wow. And as checks because my mama was sending me money like all my life she sent me like people don't understand she sent me stuff and did for me so then it came to a point where I asked my parents again like why do we keep going down here to this prison you know why do I have to keep going down here I'm the only one out of six yeah. now I can <laughs> so, see my mother but to see my godmother yeah so then they tell me well she's she's a really good friend of the family well, we got good friends of the family and they don't do half the stuff that she be doing for me. Like she was like, every time I would leave the prison, I swear to God, I would have stuff. One time, those ladies are talented. They made me a car seat and put a baby in it. And I walked out of the prison with a real life car seat that they made out of like yarn and like that plastic stuff. The inmates the made you this car seat? Huh? The inmates made you this car seat? Yeah, they made me belts. I had uh, wow. other keychains. Tucker was, I, I swear, I didn't even know I was at a prison. Like, I, I promise it was a different, and my mama, me not knowing, because she ran a pen pal scam, and I did not know about it. But me not knowing, she didn't look like a prisoner. Like, my mom used to come out of there in gold chains and hair laid. So I'm not understanding you know, I know it's a prison, but when I get in there, it's like a whole nother world. She would not make me feel like, you know, 
hours at a prison. We going to the popcorn machine. We going over here. We going to go pick out stuff on the table. We going to do all of this, you know. And she showed me different stuff. It was like, look, people made this and that, that. and she taught me things. Mm-hmm. And then she taught me never to come there either. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because absolutely, I didn't. It didn't matter. And I try not to get emotional, oh, but it did not matter. Every time I went to that prison, I knew something, but I didn't know until I was like eight is when I figured out that she was my mama. And I, but I couldn't say nothing because the now, lady do, you that, know, do you know the reason and why they would not want to tell you that this is your mom? Well, I still to this day don't know the reason that she didn't want to tell me, but my mother told me through a letter when I was 13, because by law, when you're adopted at 13, you're supposed to tell that child, you know, I'm not your real parents. So my mom. Oh, wow. That's actually the law in Arkansas. Yeah, that's the law. That's any adopted child. You're really supposed to tell, like you need to tell them. I don't care what nobody say. Anybody that got adopted kids out there, tell them kids where they come from. Or if you don't know, in Arkansas, our records are not sealed anymore. We can pay $100, which I did that. And on my records, it say my mama, ex-husband, is my daddy. So, and he was way in Chicago. But I paid, you know, you should tell your kids. But they told me when I was 13, I read a letter. Because when I used to get my mail, I used to have to read my mail out loud to my mama that came from my other mama. Yeah. So I had to read it out loud and it said, no matter what anybody tell you, I'm your real mama. And I was like, wow. And then after this that... Your, this, is letter, this is a letter from your biological mother. Yeah. She said, okay. no matter... Don't forget those words. It was like, no matter what anybody tell you, I'm your real mama. And I was like... And then when I read it out loud, the lady looked at me and she was like, give me that paper. And so I had to give her my letter and I never saw that letter again. And then a year after that, I never saw my mama. About two years after that, I never saw my mama again. Wow. Like, okay, um, Erica Janelle says, uh, so so the guy who was murdered, was he European? I'm getting no. it. We gonna pay this pay this this nigga gonna pay vibe. No, no, he was a black man and he only had seventy-seven dollars in his wallet. And the prosecutor tried to get his wife to testify against my mama like and the woman was like i ain't doing it like why would y'all want that lady to get up there <laughs> you know what i'm saying she already lost her husband because mm-hmm. he was out doing god knows you know what i'm saying like y'all that's too much leave that woman alone these are black people everybody involved is black okay. except the jury the judge the prosecutors the people that's making the decision yeah but Sounds like, uh, like arkansas <laughs> she didn't have a jury of her peers. The jury, I looked at the subpoenas for the jury. All the folks came from Jacksonville. And back in the 80s, everybody in Arkansas know who lived in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't none of us. Yeah. It might have been a yeah. few and in between. And I do mean in between. Like, why was Jack, why was, why was, never mind. I'm, I'm like, why is Jacksonville, Jacksonville isn't considered Plassey County, is it? I don't I don't know what they were doing in this case. Like why would people why would residents of Jacksonville be doing jury duty in Little Rock? They you know, people work. in North Carolina, that's almost like somebody from Greensboro doing uh jury duty in Durham to me. Because Arkansas make up their own rules. It sounds about right. Sounds about right. Courtroom and watch the judge one time. Tell the dude, look outside and count how many trees it is. At that point, I wouldn't know how to count. But this poor brother looked out there and was like, I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I mm-hmm. see six trees. They just said, that's how many years you get. Wow. <laughs> oh, that, 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 sound, that sounds about right. Because I'll never forget one time I, I was caught up in a situation in Little Rock. Um, and I'll tell I'll tell that story in another show, but it's because we don't really have time to get into that. But essentially we had to go to court and I was kind of nervous. Uh they were they were trying to it was a it was a big deal. It was a big deal, made the papers and news and everything at the particular time that I was out there. And I never forget we went to court that day and I was nervous. Made sure I hugged my son before I went to court and everything else. But I was at the place at a, such a, at a place spiritually to where I was like, you know what, I prayed about it. I was at peace of mind. And I'm like, I'm leaving up out of here. All right, so we get there, and it was a young lady that was in there, like, because it's, 
it's not like what well, back home in Jersey, you know, you had like uh different levels. So you had traffic court, then you had uh perjury court, you had you had these different kind of courts to kind of narrow down the categories. Then Little Rock, though, it was just like cases. So one case might be a murder case, another case might be uh shoplifting. Like it was just totally different. And this lady, this young, I'll never forget this, this young black chick, she was decked out. She like she had just came from the beauty shop, um, had a scarf on. Carried a bag up to the to the stand and everything, thinking that she was they, she was charged with writing bad check, and she thinking she's just gonna pay the fine. You know what I mean? So the judge looked at her and and, and sentenced her. Said, "All right, ma'am, I uh, heard the story, whatever." He's like, "How do you please?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm ready to pay for my fine today." The judge looked at her in his it, right there in her face and said, "Okay, ma'am, um, you can pay your fines right after you finish doing your 12 months." And hit his guy with, she was like, no, I just wrote bad checks. He was like, yeah, you're just going to do 12 months. And gave her 12 months. They would not even take her money. They locked her up right there on the spot. And I just yeah. knew right then, I was like, I'm in a different beast. Like, Arkansas is totally different. I'm going to tell you something. My auntie said this to me, though. She likes to drink. So I like to talk to my auntie when she drinks. And she told me, she was like, I'm going to tell you something about Arkansas. Back in the day, their women's unit, they used to put them women on buses and drive them yeah. out there and take them to there. And I was like, hold on, don't say that. Cause I was conceived somewhere. <laughs> and I <laughs> hope that wasn't. <laughs> Wait, yeah. You know. But it's sad, guess... but there's never no telling. Like, and, and it's crazy how, you know, we, we talk about, well, we've come a long way and slavery is over, but it doesn't matter if the term, it doesn't matter if terminology no longer exists. But all of those practices that came from slavery are still in place. That's yeah. the thing that people don't don't understand or realize to me. It doesn't Every matter time. if you can't technically lynch anybody anymore, or you can't do this here. If those same practices, if the same format that they use for hiring and, and, and getting approval for land so that you can get a farm, so that you can have a tobacco field, if that's different than what it is for black people in America. You feel me? As many people have roots and, and, and legacy in places like Arkansas, Mississippi, what's good, um, Shawan, tuning in, uh, Alabama, all these southern countries, there, there's a black presence there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Why is it that we don't have this land? Why don't we have more of the, like, the show Queen Sugar? Why don't more people have the sugar canes and, and, and access to all these different not things? Ar not in Arkansas. They don't want you to own nothing if you didn't. Exactly. If you look like this, you 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 can't you're not supposed to drive certain cars, you're not supposed to live in certain houses. And um I don't know, it's just crazy. I think it's everybody's hard. Yo, what's good, Joe? Joe told in. Hey, yo, sound like just, just just like VA, absolutely. And that's why I always respected you and, and rest in peace, fool. But I I never forget when I heard about you guys, Drew, like it was like, yo, these mothers got caught in Virginia, you know, Virginia Commonwealth. I do, I do the speed limit. I don't mess with Virginia because I can't. I, I'm not messing with no Commonwealth state. And like you say, bro, when you're dealing with the South, when you're dealing with them Southern states, I can't speak for all of them. But I did live in Arkansas for eight years. Listen, man, it's a it's, it's a different it's a different system systematic racism. And I'm saying because I, I don't care. It's a different systematic racism where it doesn't matter what kind of laws are passed. It doesn't matter what they say. We're going to do whatever we feel like doing because we can. Yeah. And who are going to stop us? It's, just, it's like, because I, like, literally, the man that prosecuted my mom, I called, I thought I was calling his daughter, and I was actually his wife. And he's the judge that did the, um, that woman, Ann Presley case, uh, Judge Chris Piazza, he the one that was over her case. And gave I don't remember who she is, but that name sounds familiar. Yeah, he did. And the news reported that got killed here in Arkansas, slaughtered her or whatever. Somebody okay. killed her, messed her up. And he was the one over that case, but he do what you call reform. He always do capital murder, murder case. That's what he good at. That's what he was bred on. You know what I'm saying? My mama was one of them, where he didn't have to do nothing. And he just said, give her life. You know, he recommended, he was the prosecution. He recommended life. And then, well, we're, getting, we're getting close to nine, 
hopefully, will you be available to do come back next week? Because I figured that this might have to take two parts because I definitely got more questions that I want to ask you, and I definitely want to get more into it. But before we wrap up, I kind of before I get into uh, change.org and how people could look into your mom's case and, and, and support this petition. Um, actually, I did it right before we went on the sh- live on the show. But before I get into that, I wanted to ask something. Um, okay, so you said you mentioned something about up to seven months old. I guess you were in the still in the system technically, and you were adopted at seven months. Is that how that was? No, no, no. They like swooped in like uh, I don't know. I was born. I was taken out of UAMS real quick and transferred over to Children's Hospital because of the way I was born. Like I looked like the babies on TV that lived me did it in. Had great plastic surgery as a baby, but I I was messed up. Like I, Children's Hospital called me a miracle child, and my parents, who worked for the Department of Correction, came and did put their name on the paperwork. They was my parents then. They took over everything. I never had a caseworker. This that. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because I, I need people to hear this. I need people to hear this because if I tell stuff like this, people won't believe me. So in the state of Arkansas, you had here it is your 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 pretty much awarded property of the state. They had never, was pro- never was property of the state. They just right. they just had you at Children's Hospital. They had me. That was your place of residence at the particular time. My mama said they drove her from Pine Bluff because she was wondering why she didn't go like to Jefferson Memorial and have a baby. And for those that don't know, Pine Bluff is what 35, 40 minutes away from Little Rock. Yes. Yeah, so she said I was so tortured. She said, I drove and I rode with you for about 30 minutes in pure pain. She said, even hey. though, even though it's not to cut you off, but even though the city of Palm Bluff does have hospitals there. Yeah, they 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 was trying to kill me. I think they was trying to kill me, get rid of me. I really do to this day. I honestly think that they was trying to get rid of me. Like, because who drives that long to take somebody to I a have hospital? a baby that's already in labor? Yeah. So she got there and she got on the table and they cut my mama open. She said she was chained to the bed and stuff. And the nurse told, she told the nurse, just tell me if I have a little girl. And the nurse came back. She said it was an Indian woman and told her, yep, you had a little girl, but she fighting for her life. And from there, I was shipped over to Children's Hospital. And I the only picture, the first picture I had with my mama is that little baby picture that's like on TikTok and stuff. That's the me and my mama first time being together at seven months old. Okay, so uh, again, I, I need people to understand this though. You're you're in children's hospital, and your adopted parents. Yeah, they, DHS, which stands for the Department of Human Human there Services. There was no DHS. They wasn't there. No, I thought I said you said that they. Yeah. The people showed up at the hospital. When I was born, they sat out there and waited for me to be born. When I was born, they took over. Well, there was no DHS. So your adopted parents didn't go through a process? Or they didn't have to. They just they put their name on the birth certificate? Uh-huh. They just put their name, signed their name on the birth certificate. We going to walk out this hospital with this baby. And that's what? something that is doable in the state of Arkansas in 1983. Huh? I said, and that's actually something that's doable and not not you don't get in any trouble or any penalties for anything like this here in the state of Arkansas in the year of 1983. In the year of 2022, you can still do it because I called DHS and X and they was like, well, you can pick up a baby from a hospital and say, I said, what well, that is still it. Okay. <laughs> That's kidnapped. Oh my but, goodness. I mean <laughs> I'm some I feel like I'm some kind of best kept secret because you know they don't want to talk about these things like UAMS don't even have a record of my birth but it's on my birth certificate so you know this is what it is. all right so you were you see they took it from Palm Bluff to UAM, UAMS but UAMS has no records of you ever being born there I, I went up there to the medical records department I was like yes I need to look at the papers from the record of my birth and I told them my name it was like you need to go to children's hospital I was like, I wasn't born at Children's. I was born here. <laughs> so my birth certificate. <laughs> so when you go to Children's, what, what do you find at Children's? Does Children they, have paperwork? They had all my paperwork. Saying that you were born there, not you UAMS? They said that I was born there. All of it said was I had surgery there. 
But it doesn't you talk about date of birth, none of that did. No, no, no. Yo, Drew, Drew says, sounds like some slave type move. Hey, listen, bro, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> listen, Arkansas was the closest thing that I could imagine living in slavery in modern times. I'm trying to tell you what I'm, I, and I don't talk about it a lot because it was just that. It's no other, I'm sorry people that get offended, but it, it's just that ass backwards did that people don't understand it until you experience it. I, I don't understand. I, I couldn't understand when I moved there in, in the 19, late 1990s. Like, I left in 2005. I was there from 97 to 2005. And I, I could, it baffled me how people were so outdated. Like, outdated. And everyone had black, whether you're talking about black, whether you're talking about white, it, they have the mindset that this is just the way it is. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? What are you going to do? You're going to invoke change. If yeah. you say something, it's not just going along. You know, I can say now in 2020, they ain't as bad as they used to be. Because now I think they know that the new generation, we fight back. So, you know, they don't, they don't really try them old. But if you get hemmed up in their court system. It's a wrap. They got you. It don't matter who you. The, the man wife told me my best bet was going to be to get an attorney outside the state because no one was going to fool with it. Wow. Because everybody that's tied up in it. I mean, we got some heavy. We got like Brad Hendricks, the little ambulance chaser. Uh, his daddy was <laughs> uh, sent his my mama, to, you know, to life. Like mm -hmm. that was his daddy. And he got this big, gigantic law firm out here that lived a good life with his daddy. Why your daddy took my mama away from me over something that he didn't even look into, try to see. And then it went from a capital murder to a second degree murder. And now my mama's sitting in prison on first degree murder. We just pick one. Any, many, 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 catch it. You know what I'm saying? That's like how Little Rock, it's just crazy. And one day, I, and we're not talking about, we're, we're talking about 1983. So we're not talking about any DNA. Pretty much the only, the only evidence that they had against your mom was her red confession, which in the, in court during the actual trial, she refuted and said that, you know, this is not what really happened. This is, this is what happened. They didn't have, they didn't have any fingerprints on the gun. They didn't have any, have any, any kind of evidence whatsoever other than just they her statement. Nothing but what my daddy said. He the one made the phone call. I got her. I know where she is. Go pick up. Just to say, yeah. his. Good, I hear you. Yeah, that was what that was for. He the one turned thing in, but that it's cool though. I'm gonna get justice for my mama. I'm gonna get justice for my mama. I'm gonna get justice for my mama. Again, are you gonna be able? Are you gonna be able to do this again next week? Can we pick up next week? Um, next week, yes. I'm pretty much free on Tuesdays. I hope. I okay. hope. Yeah, because I definitely, I definitely want to get more in, into the matters of, of some things that I, I really want to, um kind of get into and we'll get it get more detail in that next week because I, I really wanted to know i wanted you to, to speak to um like uh one thing that i talk about on the show is often it, it's forgiveness and and it sounds like um you're in a beautiful place when 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 it comes to you and your relationship with your mom and i asked that earlier and we didn't really get a chance to get into it so i, I you know i kind of wanted to, i kind of want we'll get into all of that aspects of it next week but you know how was that form? How was that for you as a child, forming a relationship with your mom in jail, and, and, and the effects that you think that it had on have on you today as a grown woman that have that's a mother of three daughters yourself? Well, I ain't never been to jail except for visiting. Not been having been in jail, but you know what I'm saying <laughs> from you being from me being no, a byproduct. That was one of the good things. I ain't never been to jail, uh, but. Um... I ain't gonna say we had the best relationship and still to this day, we don't have, no, we're, we will never have a real mother and daughter relationship. Like me and her had to come to that conclusion that it'll never be like how you and your mama is. Because see, the one thing for me is I've never gotten to hug my mama outside. That was I've my always, next question too. Like, so have you ever been able to like embrace your mom? Just I mean, I, I hug. You get that hug when you get there, and that can't be too long because then you got a guard in your face, which we do it on purpose. 
we do it on purpose. We hug each other till they tell us to stop hugging each other. Cause wow. I'm, and then you, I can't see it. They be, uh, they move me every time. I don't care. I don't pay attention to rules. Like you have to sit across from each other. You can't sit beside each other. It's stupid. And so we always have, um, you know, found a way to like show. She showed me love and affection through buying me things throughout my years growing up as a kid. Because like I said, them visits stopped at 14 once I knew the truth. The lady didn't want to take me back no more. So then... You say the uh, lady, you're talking about your, your adopted mother. Yeah. She didn't okay. want to take me back no more. So then, uh, you know, I, I started to grow hate towards my mama. Because I'm like, dang, you put me in this situation with this crazy woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, you put me here with these people. Because I was placed in their home. She gave me to them, but she said she didn't give me to them like that. Not to, like, adopt. She just wanted them to take care of me. And I used to hate her. And one time, I told my mom, and she told me, she's like, you remember that time when you came down here and sat in front of me and said, you want to wrap your hands around my throat and choke life from me? Like, these are the things I was telling. <laughs> I was that kind of hurt because wow. no one knew what I was going through. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she looked like the good lady that got the baby from prison and taking care of the little sick baby, but she's also mistreating this child. Mm -hmm. And because she's up here, no one believes me. So I had to wait till this lady like passed away to do because she worked for the Little Rock School District. So I can't tell nobody at school because they believe she's perfect. And then she worked for the church and she worked for the prison. She told me if you ever try to, you know, do anything that I will uh, block you. And here recently when my mama had COVID and you have to call Pine Bluff to check on your parents or whoever is in there to make sure that they're okay. The people told me that I could not uh, check on her because I was not next of kin. And if you've ever seen a picture of my mother, I look <laughs> like her yeah. twin. And I told the woman, well, I'm on her visitation list marked as her daughter. Well, the lady had marked me down. The woman that raised me had me blocked where I could not be her next of kin. But we fixed all of that now. So it was, I mean, it was some dirty games being played all the way around the board. But now you, know, you say that your mom wanted them to take care of you, but they didn't want to do necessary adopt. Are these the same people that showed up that? Children's Hospital and put their names on the paper? Okay. Yeah. So and your, you mom know, did, your mom that, did know the lady that eventually adopted you. My mama didn't know her from a can of paint. She said a girl, let me tell you something, and my mom got manipulated out of baby. She said she was sitting in that prison one day and a girl walked up and was like, hey, I know this woman that take kids. So me, knowing the lady that raised me, she sent that girl. She didn't she didn't, you know what I'm saying? She peeped my mama's situation out. And she said, that's what she is. She's the baby snatcher and I don't care. That's what she do. And she told um, that girl that, and that girl was like, I know a lady that, you know, keep get kids or whatever. And then my mama said, that's how she met her. And then I don't know what kind of agreement or what kind of adoption I had. Because if you adopted, you're not supposed to know who your parent is. But they kept taking me down to a prison twice a month, like a visitation. You know how you go, if you ain't the daddy and you don't live in the house, that's what my mama, and she paid child support. She paid a check every month, sent that lady big checks every month. From to, prison? Yes, from prison. Wow. Yeah, because I, I mean, you talked to me a little bit about it, and like I said, we'll definitely get in in the, in the more of that of uh, the adopted parents and that that whole ordeal on, yeah. on on part two. But it's it just like wow, I was definitely as you were just telling me, it was like automatically thought about Antoine Fisher. I'm like, I was definitely getting Antoine Fisher vibes, like like that that, that lady that portrayed. Uh, I'm about to go rewatch that movie because yeah, that definitely. Hey, <laughs> and and I, I don't, I don't, I don't want it to trigger anything within you, but like it's like, yo, man, like certain people like that, man, like I, I, I pray with everything in me, 
And I'm somebody that, that loves God. I absolutely love God. I just pray that there's a particular special, special kind of place in all of eternity to have for people that's like that. That, that just praise on children, that plays on people that's weak, praise on people that can't help themselves. Like that, it, you know, I hope, I hope there's a special VIP section to hell for the people like that. Because it is so wrong, you don't understand the trauma that you're causing other people to live with. And it's not just about you or that individual, because it's going to have a trickling effect on how you parent when it comes to raising your daughters and how their daughters, like it's a, it's a chain reaction that should have never been uh, put into motion in the first place. My kids don't get that, but I did have to watch other people like in their homes, like to see what normalcy was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know the stuff that hurt me. I wouldn't dare do the stuff that woman did to me to my kids. I wouldn't dare. But I had to watch others. I had to learn from others to see how to mother. Because she wasn't, she was a good show. She could put on a good show. But at home, she was worse than Mother Teresa. And I think I had to, I mean, not Mother Teresa. What's that, Mommy Dear? And I had to believe her. Yeah, she Ooh, was. That was the first. That was yeah. the first. That was the first movie that I watched as a kid that I laughed not one. I didn't laugh not one time doing it, and I was like, "Wow, this don't just happen in like black homes, like like abuse for abusing children is like crazy." No wire hangers. Like we yeah. all remember, mommy dear is like, yeah. <laughs> like with the wire. And then I, I, I'm thinking that as of course as a kid, I'm just hoping that. I'm wondering, as a kid, why would they make a movie like this? Like, who would find this entertaining, not realizing that some people are living it and going through this type of stuff every single day of their lives, man? That's crazy. That's yeah. totally crazy. But, yeah, before we get up out of here, what's good, Ed? Um, Before we get up out of here, we're going to pick this up again next week. Um, So be here, Square, be here on time next week, um, 8 p.m. Next Tuesday night, we're going to do part two with Nicole Williams. But it, as we're leading up to the um, next week, um, again, happy belated born day because your bond born day, I believe, was what, February 1st? Yes, February 1st. She turned 59. She's been okay, locked up. So again, and, and, and for those that wonder, you know, if you want to look her up or read her name, we check her out. Um, the name is Beverly Latiker. Is that yeah. correct? L A C I K E R. Google her, it's the whole thing. Come up, you can read the story them people wrote. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a whole lot of stuff about her. But if you want to write her or send her a birth, well, you can't send birthday cards. But you could write her and send a shout out, you know, anything will help. But go to change.org. That's what I was going. House and look for Beverly Latiker. And the, the whole thing was saying, sign her petition. I believe we almost have 10,000 signatures. And I'm trying to get Governor Hutchinson's attention, but he's playing God right now. So, you know, until he gets out of office in the next God person. Well, we're going we're gonna to pray that uh, God touches Governor Hutchinson's heart just like he did in Oklahoma. I, I read the story about the young man in Oklahoma that they were trying to put to death uh, last month. And we prayed over the governor that he would do the right thing. And luckily they stayed his execution, which he had a crazy case, too. But again, that's change.org. And like you said, I think they uh, think they're trying to get to what 10,000 petitions. And when well, yeah. I went, when I yeah. signed it like myself right before we went live on the show, the count was up to 989,893. Nine, 9, I made yeah. 9,893. So we're less than 120 20, uh, uh, signatures away. From you know getting the ball rolling on making this ha- happen, where they say, "Listen, um, they got to hear our voice." You said that we need ten thousand signatures. Here's the ten thousand signatures. Not that it's gonna happen overnight, but let's get this ball rolling. Like, all right, let's, we go. We we trying to work with you guys as far as f- uh, following the protocol. So if you don't mind, please look it up. That's change. dot org. Change the word change. dot org. Beverly Latiker. L A T I K E R. Um, and please sign the petition and let's get that on up to the ten thousand dollars. I mean, the ten thousand uh, uh, signatures that way they got to find another avenue or another way to try to BS around. But 
let's start, you know, let's let's follow the proper steps on trying to really get your mom out so that we could be a part of this this, this free my mama. Um, because I'll be I do definitely want to be able to see you be able to hug um your mom, like you say, on this side of the wall, as long as you want to, as long as she wants to. Um, and, that, and there ain't nobody in the world that can do anything about it. Um, so that's 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 my heart's prayer for both of you ladies. And and, and I, I want to see that this, this happens. Um, um, inbox, inbox me that info so I can sign more. All right, Julia, I'm gonna definitely try to get that to you again. That, again, for everybody that want to know where they can sign a petition, that's change c h a n g e dot org. Change dot O-R-G, change.org. Let's go over there and sign up for Beverly Latica and sign that petition. Um, um, did you have anything that you wanted to add out, cl close yeah. out with before we get into yeah, 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 I have to go back to my, you know, my hustle. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let you go ahead and get to, get to your hustle so you can make that money. But again, uh, in the meantime, too, while we're leading up next week, tell people the name of the TikTok page where they can go see who Beverly Nicole Beverly Latica is? Who Nicole Williams is? Uh, it's Nicole Williams five eight five. But Nicole Williams five eight five on TikTok. And if you since it's back to my Facebook, the same picture that's on my Facebook page will pop up on my TikTok. I have currently sixty six thousand followers. So. And you do have some videos with with video chat yeah, and whatnot you with your mom on your TikTok page, correct? Yes, yeah, she can talk. Somebody just put the link in the comments too for the change.org link. Thank you, Tashiba. Tashiba is another one of those. Um, and again, we're gonna do definitely do a part two for this um next week. But I do want to have you on future shows too, Nicole, because that's something that I've been trying to do for like since I've created this show over a year and a half ago, almost two years now, is I want to do some shows on on adoption. And I was glad that you say that you said what you said being a adoptee earlier like you know parents duty because like one of the um i'm, I'm quite sure Tashiba has talked about it so she doesn't mind me sharing it but Tashiba was also grew up in an adopted family who's the one that posted the um link um when our top viewers thanks again Tashiba for doing that but you know me and her would have one-on-one -on -one conversations about you know when do you tell the child that they're adopted should you tell the child that they're adopted is it better to do it when they're younger is it better to do it when they're older and, you know, I don't look at it as a right or wrong situation, but I think that is something that definitely needs to be discussed because, you know, you have health issues, you have you have all these different kinds of things and, and questions sometimes that if the right person doesn't decide, decide, make the choice. You see, we hate that I always use that word choice, but if that if the one person with that holds the power, they don't make the choice to give you the truth, then that puts you at an unfair advantage, in my opinion. You know what I mean? And, yep. and I think the truth is, like, give me give me the truth. No matter how painful it may be, give me the truth, and then let me reassess my situation from there. But I definitely want to have you back on, on when we had when we do the show on adoption and, and, and things of that nature there. So, again, um, get you some rest. Um, get you to grind then. And... <laughs> Like I said, not, and I ain't say sleep, just give you some rest, because I already know you you, you 24 7 hustler. You're making it happen. Um, and and, and I, I like again, I just want to take my hats off to you for 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 you doing what you're doing, taking out the time to do the show. Um, I yeah. thank you for 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 every I thank you for you for being you for the simple fact that again, you said it, you said it. We don't have a perfect relationship, but here it is, you know, you're trying to fight for your mother's freedom. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that's a beautiful thing. And, and we're going to get into a little bit more of it next week. But thank you again from the bottom of my heart for taking out the time to do this. Um, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, again, if you haven't already subscribed, go to YouTube and subscribe to the Marvin Bennett Jr. Show and watch some previous older episodes. I'm going to try to get this one uploaded as soon as possible. As I, After I get caught up, I got kind of backtracked over the holiday seasons. But, you know, there are plenty of episodes for you guys to go up there and watch now. Again, on YouTube, that's the Marvin Bennett Jr. Show. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and watch some of those videos. Feel free to leave your comments on there as well because um, you won't be able to see the comments that are on these live feeds from Facebook. But yeah, you put some fresh comments in there, questions, whatever the case may be. And whatever episode you leave those comments or questions on, 
me, myself, or the guests one from that particular show, we'll get back to you guys and, and, and chime into you. But a thanks again for everybody taking out this journey. Hope that everyone enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, have a wonderful evening, safe evening. And with that being said, DeAndre and Daddy, and signing off as usual, know that I love you. But I also not also I love you intentionally, but I also love you unconditionally. Till next week, everyone. Peace. All right, cool. So we off the live stream now. But yeah, we'll we'll pick up um next week. I'm still watching it on my phone. <laughs> it's still going.